Philippines. So we have a very special guest today, Mr. Hananto Wikatsono. He's a Principal Solution Engineer at Oracle MySQL Global Business Unit, Asia Pacific. He has around 20 years of experience as an IT solution architect and database administrator, foc focusing on design optimization, support, and solution using Oracle hardware and software. He published blogs on procedures of deploying MySQL on container-driven infrastructures and more on MySQL shell custom plugins. Now, let's welcome Mr. Hananto Wikasono. Mr. Hananto, over to you. Hi, Mr. Hananto. I think you are muted. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for your time and interest in attending my session. So uh, this session will explain about MySQL shells and its functionalities, utilities, and more. Interestingly, um, I would like to explain about uh, shell capabilities to do many, many things dealing with MySQL database, uh, despite of having a lot of functions in MySQL shell that can help both TPA and uh, developers dealing with MySQL database. These tools provide extendable framework that enables people uh, to create their own custom plugin using either Python or JavaScript, and they can inject their own uh, new set of commands into the shells um, and use them. So uh, for me, I'm excited uh, to share all of these uh, shell capabilities, uh, as well as uh, how to do coding, uh, the custom plugin for anyone, for everyone uh, who's interested in using this shell and coding the plugin for extending the shell functions uh, to meet uh, your requirement. So uh, this is my motivations uh, of giving this talk. So uh, this is the safe harbor statement uh, from Oracle. This is about me. So yeah, basically I'm a database architect and experience in both the Oracle database and MySQL. And uh, I consider myself as a DevOps and database uh, cloud native believer. And uh, I love uh, coding and uh, scripting. I easily get fascinated uh, with uh, math and physics. And these are my tech blocks and uh, GitHub, uh, where I share my workshop materials, uh, coding for my Kubernetes operator, and coding for some custom plugin for MySQL shell and much more. Okay, what is uh, MySQL Shell? Okay, basically MySQL Shell is uh, MySQL database client tools, uh, but it advanced uh, for various reasons. As a database tool, uh, MySQL Shell is used for DMLs and queries against MySQL database. It's also a code editor for development with MySQL. It has XDEF API that enables developers to use MySQL Shell to create programs on JavaScript, Python, or SQL, dealing with both relational data and unstructured data formatted ingestion document. Uh, you can use MySQL shell, uh, sorry, MySQL database as hybrid database, uh, not just for relational database, but also for non-SQL database. So you can use JavaScript or Python for CIUD statements against uh, the non-SQL portions of MySQL database. More than that, uh, MySQL shell has admin API uh, that helps uh, DBA, MySQL DBA, dealing with the uh, InnoDB cluster provisioning, managing life cycles, and so on as well as the load dump uh, that helps the uh, DB also uh, in, uh, to do a logical backup and recovery. Okay, this uh, MySQL load dump is basically uh, an, an advanced uh, logical backup and recovery to replace uh, the uh, traditional uh, MySQL dump. So we will talk a little bit detail later on. All right, uh, these are some of uh, available functionalities uh, in MySQL shells. So as a client tools and a code editor, uh, MySQL Shell provides an interactive client execution mode uh, when you can type a command and enter a statement will be interactively uh, processed and printed on screen. So it supports Unicode text input and color terminal for better look and feel. And it supports multi-line code enabling uh, MySQL Shell to catch a multiple line and execute that as a single statement. So um, MySQL Shell uh, supports batch code execution as well and that taken from different source and processed, process those lines in a non-interactive way. So uh, script processing will be on single language, of course, and non-formatted output, unless uh, you put interactive parameter when you run the MySQL shell from the command line. Uh, you can use this to integrate uh, with external tool as well. 
So uh, the XDEF API and protocol X in MySQL shell, yeah, uh, enables uh, the MySQL shell to deal uh, with the relational database and document store. So you can use CRUD uh, for document store and SQL for relational table. So you can also format the output in traditional table format also using MySQL shell. You can also format it using JSON. You can also format it using uh, tax separated outputs. So later on, if you need to have uh, CSV, then you can just easily uh, run the bash command uh, to uh, convert the uh, separated output into the CSV. It's very simple. So you can activate JSON wrapping uh, for all output when you start MySQL shell from the command line uh, to help uh, you to integrate MySQL shell with the uh, external tool. So I highlight specifically for extension and utilities in red font in my presentation slide. Uh, because these two are the main uh, central topic uh, of this talk. So uh, this diagram uh, depicts uh, almost all functionalities of MySQL shell. Some of them uh, we already discussed uh, in previous slide. Okay, we have JavaScript, Python, SQL. They are the main language. Okay, once you log into the shell terminals, you can log into the database and deal with uh, MySQL database using JavaScript, Python, and SQL. So uh, we already explained also about the uh, batch executions mode and interactive execution modes, and also uh, the admin API that helped uh, MySQL DBA deal with uh, InnoDB cluster, XDEF API that helped developers to deal with MySQL document store, JSON document format, and so on. So um, we will focus more about uh, customizing MySQL shell look and feel. Later on, I will discuss about that, how to customize things, how to change from DIM and how to use command history to easily recall command that has been executed in shell without retyping it uh, when you want to re reuse it, uh, which will improve your productivity when using the shell. So MySQL shell provide auto completion as well, okay, because the command is so many, you don't have to memorize all those commands because it has auto completions. Uh, once you type a little bit, just press a uh, uh, tap button then uh, the command will be auto-completed. If more than one command uh, return uh, over there, then you know uh, it will print out all possible commands and you just need to retype again uh, with uh, a little bit complete and then uh, press the button tap, then deal with it. You can execute the command and so on. So the MySQL shell also has a parallel import table uh, for rapid data import uh, to relational uh, table for large data set. It will analyze the input data and distribute it into a couple of chunks and every chunk will have uh, its own session, okay? Uh, and it has uh, parallel connections to the uh, MySQL database and it will complete faster than using a tre single traded uh, upload. All right, it also has a uh, import JSON, okay? Functionalities to import the JSON document. If the import tables in importing the uh, relational tables, import JSON is really related to the importing JSON document. So um, just sharing a couple of tips uh, to, further, to further speed up the import task. Uh, if your database is not in production yet, you can actually disable the redo locks or maybe disable the bin lock if your production is not, or, or is, if the database is not part of the replication of Google replication, you can disable the redo lock, you can disable the bin lock so that the, it will reduce the IO, uh, IO write during the import. So um, last but not least, um, MySQL shell also has a functionalities to do a pre-check uh, for MySQL 5.7, let's say, before you want to upgrade, if you want to upgrade this MySQL shell, sorry, MySQL database 5.7 to uh, MySQL 8.0. So it will produce a report uh, about things that you need to change first in your MySQL 5.7 before executing the upgrade and so on. Starting with MySQL shell. So uh, MySQL shell come with uh, support on Microsoft Windows, Linux, and Mac OS uh, for 64-bit platforms. And please use latest available MySQL shell versions, even though you have a uh, lower MySQL, uh, MySQL server uh, version. So download MySQL shell latest versions, okay, to play even though your MySQL server versions is uh, way below, yeah. Use this even for your uh, MySQL 5.7 with limited functionalities even. You can use it for MySQL 5.6, uh, but uh, please uh, bear in mind that not all uh, capabilities for MySQL shell will be compatible with that. Okay, as you see on the screen, I have uh, installation, how to install Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Okay, in Linux, 
we have RPM, we have TAR, and we have the, uh, the APT as well. So uh, once you install that um, on your machines, then you can start MySQL shell uh, to connect to the database. First time, uh, the MySQL shell will form format uh, in the default format, yeah? uh, uh, in basic. Yeah? And then uh, uh, shell mode is set to uh, JavaScript. So to connect to the database, uh, simply use a backslash C, C or backslash connect, then followed by the connection string formatted as user, app, server name, or IP address, and column uh, database uh, port number. Then you will need to enter the password. And once uh, password is validated, uh, the shell will ask if the password shall be stored locally on MySQL shell home directory or not. It will store locally in encrypted format if you accept yes. So the next login using the same terminal, it will be auto login and you don't have to provide the password anymore. So alternatively, you can also mentioning the password in your connection strings uh, in your, as you see on the screen. Okay, uh, you can also uh, use connection strings uh, when starting the MySQL shell. So user at password, sorry, user column password at servers and column uh, the port. So uh, if you are not happy uh, with the default prompt uh, format from MySQL shell, then you pick, you can pick one of the prompt format templates uh, from the directory prompt inside the MySQL shell installation directory. Uh, the prompt format uh, template, the, the format template is uh, the files as, is a JSON uh, format. So uh, you can just need to copy this JSON file to MySQL shell home directory as a prompt.json as you see on the screen. Then when we launch MySQL shell again, uh, the prompt format will be changed. The MySQL shell is really, really configurable. It relies on shell configuration that can be modified easily and persisted. So in order to show current configurations on the shell, we can execute command shell.option. So my slide shows the default configuration of MySQL shell. Default mode for the prompts is none, so that uh, once you log in, then it will go to the JavaScript. And uh, we also have the history.autosave that determine if MySQL shell will memorize the commands that have been executed if autosave is equal to true. Yeah. So the history uh, max size uh, will uh, determine how many numbers of uh, pass commands yeah, uh, will be uh, stored in the MySQL shell uh, command history. So uh, we can change the MySQL shell uh, current configurations by issuing command shell dot option dot set persist blah blah blah. So um, I give you uh, on JavaScript as well as on Python. So we have JavaScript and Python. Uh, a little bit different, but uh, do not do not worry because we have auto com auto auto completion. So yeah, auto completion will help you. So you can also change the the modes uh, between Python, JavaScript, and SQL as you see on the screen. It's very simple, basically. So um, we don't have uh, to change the mode uh, from uh, JavaScript to SQL. Let's say if you want to execute SQL command on the on, on JavaScript mode, uh, because uh, what we can do is just uh, using backslash JS and then for uh, sorry backslash SQL and followed by SQL statement in order to execute SQL statement on the JavaScript mode. So it's very handy. You don't have to change uh, the mode. So this is the utilities on MySQL shell. So uh, you can use MySQL shell to perform logical backup and recovery against uh, MySQL database. Uh, MySQL shell download uh, utility on instance level, schema level, and table levels. So it, it supports uh, export on all schemas or selected schemas, all table or selected table in accordance to your need. Okay, what tables or schema you want to dump out. Uh, it supports online, non-locking, and consistent dump and load, uh, but it is guaranteed that only yeah, InnoDB storage engine tables uh, will be consistent. Yeah. So by default, um, the dump load uh, will be multi-tracked with the uh, default track is set to four, and then the utilities will open their own sessions for each track and then copy uh, the options such as connections, compressions, and access options from the global session and so on. So MySQL shell download is also able to provide information about uh, backup activity progress. 
Yeah, the progress information will include estimated total numbers of rows to be done, the numbers of rows uh, done so far, the percentage complete, and the throughput in rows and bytes uh, per second. So once the dump and load activities fail, let's say, for example, I upload to MySQL database service on the cloud, and then somehow it is failed in the middle, then MySQL shell actually records my backup progress, and I just need to rerun the backup with the same command, and dump and load will be running uh, started from where it was failed. So it supports the backup on OCI uh, storage bucket as well. It is compatible with 5.7, and uh, technically it can run on 5.6 as well, but with limited uh, functionalities. Okay, not all functionalities will be compatible uh, with MySQL 5.6. So um, it also can run on dry run mode. So with dry run mode, it will check whether the command will be successful or not, what item to be done, is there any compatibility issue, compatibility issue need to be fixed before executing the dump load uh, before we, for real, yeah, for real with uh, certain options. So interestingly, okay, the diagram that I presented on the slide, uh, on the right, right uh, side, uh, basically shows the performance comparisons with other logical backup tools and it shows um, as well shell dump load superi superiority yeah, in terms of performance. The benchmark runs using MySQL 8.4.21 with the lock disable, just to speed up the things and so that it won't, um, you know, uh, based on the redo lock speed and so on. So it is using bare metal OCI compute with 44 core Intel Xeon, uh, 512 GB RAM and 240 megabyte per second IO throughput using Red Zero. So, uh, the testing shows a huge throughput uh, using MySQL shell download compared to other uh, logical backup tools in MySQL. So these are the commands in JavaScript and their corresponding command in Python and uh, to dump the instance and dump schemas and dump tables. And I've given examples uh, on the slide how to dump instance and put the dump files into the directory. Okay, it will run on four threads because uh, I don't mention the param thread parameters in, in, in that command. So um, once completed, uh, we will have a backup files in encrypted format. Sorry, and um, it will have a backup in a compressed format. Yeah, that's for data. And then for, you know, um, metadata, okay, uh, it will create a SQL file, yeah. Uh, SQL files uh, to create the object again during the data loading and some of the files, let's say, uh, add.json. Add.json is very interesting, okay, because a shell dump instance can be consistent backup. The add.json will show that consistency equal to true. And then uh, it's also mentions about GTID executed. It is very, very important. So it will record the last GTID executed, okay, once the backup is end. So it is very useful during the restoration. It will dump, uh, sorry, it will restore as GTID purge and we can create a synchronous replications based on GPID uh, if we want to restore uh, for creating the read replica. Very, very important. So this is the example to perform dumb schemas in JavaScript. Okay, we can put an uh, array of schemas uh, that we want to backup and the backup location for dumb table. We can put arrays of tables and the backup location as well. And um, if we want to migrate the data uh, to MySQL database service, we need to use a parameter OCI MDS equal to true. Uh, we need to use a strip definer parameter because MySQL database service requires specific privilege, special privilege to create database object. And then we need to use uh, strip restricted runs, okay, because we need to remove a specific privilege that are restricted by the MySQL database service from grant statements. So user and their roles cannot be given this privilege. This parameter is really, really important in mandatory if you want to load your data to MySQL database service on uh, cloud uh, on OCI. So a question, can we use MySQL shell down to backup MySQL version 5.6 and load uh, to MySQL 8.0 to perform out of place upgrade using logical backup restore? The answer is yes. You can do that by MySQL shell down with caveat of course use users parameter equal to false to exclude users, their rules, and their grants creation in the dump. So once loaded to 8. Uh, version 8.0, then you need to create rules, grants, and user again, manually, yeah, in, uh, in MySQL 8.0. Without setting this user equal to false, the backup will be failed. This is for 
MySQL 5.6. So um, this is the syntax for load down to restore backup to the database, both in JavaScript uh, on the left and corresponding uh, Python syntax on the right. The local in file parameter yeah, is mandatory to set to on, okay, to make the server permits local data loading uh, by client that requests the lo local data loading in the database. Otherwise, the loading the, the loading will be failed. Yeah, for more options, devmyscore.com, you can see that. And then uh, special for skipping log. Again, we can actually uh, skip the locations by, um, you know, uh, by set the parameter skip in log equal to true. With this parameter, then all threads of the data loading will use SQL bin log equal to zero. It will make the restoration faster and less this consumption. So this is the examples of using MySQL shell load down as part of the upgrade to MySQL 8.0. Ignore versions because we are using the uh, uh, lower MySQL versions and will be restored in a, a MySQL 8.0. And then uh, we need to use update GTID set so that the uh, GTID executed on the lower versions will be applied to GTID parts of the MySQL 8.0. So once done, then we can create a GTID based replication. Very simple. So uh, in terms of migration, data migration, you can create a baseline data migration by using MySQL shell dump and load it to, uh, to MySQL 8.0. While you load it, there is a transactions coming to the uh, lower MySQL, the, the current production. So in order to make these transactions to be able to synchronize to the target MySQL 8.0, we can use a GTID based replication later on and waiting for the capital. Very important and very useful. So this is uh, basically clients that communicate with MySQL servers using X protocol and use X uh, API to develop applications. While the um, MySQL provide, MySQL shall provide this ability by implementing active API and communicating to MySQL server through X protocols uh, to do a CRUD by using JavaScript, Python, or simple SQL. Yeah? And then MySQL server runs X plugin to communicate through X protocol to MySQL shell that implementing uh, the X dev API. It's very simple. So these are samples of no SQL operations in MySQL document store in MySQL 8.0 and uh, using CRUD. Uh, we can do create, we can do uh, read, update, and delete, and so on. And MySQL Document Store um, is an ACID uh, compliance uh, that support transactions, uh, commit, and rollback. So um, you can import the uh, JSON document to an existing tables or collections uh, to a new one uh, created for the import, let's say. So the slide shows two examples uh, to import product.json to MySQL, D, MySQL DB schema and collection name is product. The syntax between JavaScript and Python are similar, but we don't have to worry to memorize the things because we have MySQL shell autocorrect. So for the third example, okay, if the table, the target table and collection does not exist in the database, then it will automatically create it by the utility by using the JSON file name. So uh, MySQL shell also has uh, admin API uh, that gives a set of commands for DBA to easily deploy and manage the InnoDB cluster. So what is MySQL InnoDB cluster? It is a shared nothing architecture for MySQL high availability and scaling feature uh, as uh, integrated end-to-end uh, -end solutions that easy to use, easy to manage using MySQL shell. So it provides uh, consistency with no data loss, high availability with uh, automatic failover, uh, with replica scalability, and it can provide up to 99.99% system type availability SLA on MySQL. So MySQL shell support JavaScript and Python in addition to native SQL mode uh, for the admin API. So admin API is executed via DBA global variable and it's associated method in MySQL shell. So it will be easy for the DBA to uh, configure, deploy, and administer InnoDB cluster and InnoDB replica set. You can use it for productions. You can use it for sandbox if you want to test the deployment before committing uh, to a full uh, productions deployment. So upgrade checker is used to verify uh, whether MySQL server instance are ready for upgrade. It will automatically check the specified, specified target release and giving advice uh, for further check that we need to do manually. Uh, the upgrade checker utility can check the configuration uh, files also for MySQL, if we mention the configuration file, where is the configuration file? 
and so on. So um, it will check whether the existing configurations will be compatible with the, the higher list or not. Yeah. Uh, for example, on the screen, uh, we log in using MySQL shell uh, to sort uh, to the source database via X protocols or classic protocols uh, with the user that has reload, process, and select privileges. So we run the upgrade and check the output. And we review the finding and perform the necessary adjustment before continuing uh, the upgrade. So in this case, MySQL shell is really, really helpful. Really, really uh, is, a, is a great tool uh, to do a lot of things uh, with MySQL database, be like as a DBA or developer. So um, next, this is a programming in MySQL shell. OK, MySQL shell have extendable framework that we can use uh, to create our own customized report. Or we can we can we call it as user defined report. So uh, we can call this report once using uh, backslash show, or we can constantly refresh uh, the output using backslash watch. And of course, uh, we can mention the interval later on. So in order to uh, view uh, how many of customized uh, object or user defined report that we have in MySQL shell, simply log into MySQL shell and issue commands uh, backslash show. Then it will show uh, the list of uh, customize uh, report or user-defined user report. And to execute one of the report, simple, just backslash show and then followed by the user-defined report name. So this is the user-defined report sample, okay, that I created in my GitHub, you can check. Uh, I mean, sorry, it's not this. This is uh, my friend's GitHub, okay. So um, First of all, we need to create the directory. First of all, we need to create a directory, um, what we call it as uh, plugin group. Yeah. The plugin group directory uh, will be sitting um, behind or will be sitting under the plugin directory in MySQL shell home directory. MySQL shell home directory is dot MySQL direct, MySQL assets directory that exists in our home directory. Once we execute the MySQL shell, then it will automatically create the home MySQL shell home group directory under our user home directory in our OS. So as you see on the screen, we have register report. Shell that register report is used for registering our uh, user defined report so that it can be recognized by the MySQL shell. So um, uh, this user uh, sh shell that register report will mention about the you know procedures that will be called uh, that being called by this uh, report. So uh, we need to still read, uh, I mean, write the uh, Python or JavaScript uh, procedure. Uh, as you see on the screen, we can use a dev log info. Log info is the name of the report. And then session is the parameter. And then this is the query. And the query will produce the uh, JSON format. I don't want JSON format. Then I can, I need to, you know, put this uh, output into the variable, uh, variables, uh, array variable. Then I, I need to, you know, uh, looping this array variable and uh, reformatting the output and so on. So yeah, the output is something like this. So uh, this is how to running report. OK, we have uh, backslash show, we have backslash watch, and we can uh, put the interval. Yeah, the interval is number of seconds in between. Yeah. It's 0 0.5 means that every uh, uh, seconds, every half seconds, it will uh, show. So it also have a null CLS that specify uh, the screen will not clear before refresh and so on, so that we can always refer to the previous result and so on. So the last one, uh, which is report.logInfo, is how to call uh, using uh, shell method, yeah, using this uh, shell function. And shell location is basically to get our current session, right? Because uh, we have this code, uh, we have this parameter for session, that means we need to parsing the session parameter. So get the session shell.getSession is the procedure to get a uh, current uh, session uh, that, you know, when we log in or connect to the database. So this is the built-in report of MySQL shell. Okay, we have uh, uh, threads, query, and thread. Uh, threads will, you know, report all the MySQL uh, threads available, whether it is foreground or uh, background, yeah. And then thread, we can specify uh, which uh, thread ID, which TID uh, need to monitor and so on. And then query is just simple. Okay, we can we can put the interval also because uh, we use uh, XYZ watch. And as I mentioned about plugin group, uh, plugin group is like a, you know subdirectory uh, under um, .mysql sh slash plugins directory. 
Yeah. So as you see there, I have a couple of the plugin plugin group. Uh, I will need extension, firewall, group replications, uh, Kubernetes, or uh, and so on. Yeah. So under this, this directory, uh, I will have the uh, what I call it as uh, init.py. Uh, where is my init.py? Uh, okay. Uh, let on. I will. I will uh, explain. Oh yes, this is the init.py. If we, um, you know, code our uh, plugin using Python, then uh, we need to have uh, init.py uh, inside this plugin uh, inside directory, or init.js if you are using JavaScript. So only init uh, file will be loaded uh, by the MySQL when it is loaded. I mean, MySQL shell when it is loaded. When we start MySQL shell from the command line, uh, from the old branch, then you know the init. Uh, Whatever uh, procedure, whatever you know, library inside the init will be loaded. Uh, so this is uh, how to run uh, our plugin, which is uh, validated password. So actually, uh, with this all of this plugin, I pick up the simple one that I created, which is validated uh, validated password. So in order to know how many numbers of method inside uh, this uh, plugin, then I just uh, issue command validate underscore pass and dot and basically uh, press button tap, then I will have install plugin and set policy. The MySQL shell framework will add another another one, which is help. So I can create help actually using the init file. The init init file, either on JS or either on, on PY, uh, we can put a free text over there that if we run uh, help, then that free text will be appeared. All right, so this is the samples on MySQL shell plugin. Let's say I want to execute the help, something like this. Then this is the three text, three defined text. And inside the validated password uh, directory, I have uh, two files, basically init.py. It is uh, the mandatory, the main uh, files that being executed by MySQL shell, being loaded by MySQL shell uh, once we execute from the OS command and password validation.py. Password validation .py, I ignore. Yeah, MySQL shell will not read that. However, um, if uh, I, I segregated uh, the code uh, outside the init.py because I want to have the clean, I want to have the, the clean init.py. Yeah. So usually, what I did, uh, I create init.py and then I import uh, another file which is password validation.py or any file that I want to to run as. Uh, in the inside the init of py, so I import that. Yeah, this is the uh, the samples of init of py. So the class is validated password, and as I mentioned, okay, because my code is residing on validated password py, then I need to import that into the init of py, so that when my shell is loading, lo my shell is loading the, the, all the plugin, then it will you know load uh, whatever uh, code that available in password underscore validation that UI as well. Yeah, this is the plugin samples, how to how to run, uh, sorry, the, the code. Uh, as you see on the screen, uh, I have uh, two declaration, the important declaration. The first declaration, plugin underscore function, is how, uh, telling the MySQL shell that I want these, uh, you know, functions to be available on the shell. Without this, then these functions, these functions will not be able to uh, to be called uh, from the MySQL shell. Yeah, this is to 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 say to the MySQL shell that hey, uh, I need to load uh, this uh, uh, coding. Yeah, because uh, maybe uh, inside one uh, code source code, maybe not all uh, code uh, we want to to be available. Yeah, we want them to be available uh, online on the shell. Yeah, so we can just uh, pick and choose uh, which. Uh, Commands or which uh, procedures need to be uh, to be able to you know to be to be can be seen from the from the yeah. so this is the install plugins is the procedure definitions and this is the help yeah as you see uh, on the screen I can put help over here and this is the the, the core coding yeah the core code the same like this okay I have a function validate password dot set policies is how the MySQL shell will you know expose uh, these procedures uh, on the shell and set policies depth set policies like basically like python's uh, procedure declaration and so on and this is the main uh, the main uh, uh, coding yeah the main coding 
So this is how it runs. Okay, usually in MySQL, we can install plugin, simple uh, by install plugin, blah, 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 and so on. But uh, with this, uh, it's even simpler. The issue command validate password or install plugin, then it will install uh, uh, validate password plugin. And uh, the other one, validate password dot sell policy is to set the policy for the password, like password length, password, uh, you know, capital letter, uh, number of capital letter, uh, uppercase, lowercase, um, numbers of the uh, special characters within the password and uh, uh, within the same, uh, within one password and so on. So uh, without this, okay, we can use, we can do easily as well, no worries. But with this uh, valid password plugin, uh, at least uh, it will speed up the DBA work. Basically, we don't have to uh, type in uh, multiple commands and remember um, various, um, you know, uh, system variables in MySQL to configure the password complexity and so on. So, uh, this is the the, the very simple uh, plugins, but there are a couple of plugins that we created uh, in a GitHub uh, that are more complicated than this. Uh, feel free to uh, check it out. Okay, this is the uh, the GitHub uh, uh, that we share the uh, the code. Okay, which is uh, AAA uh, underscore dash sg at master sh. So you can see a uh, 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 plugin that I uploaded over there, and this one is for forking from uh, my colleague that we read. Uh, AAA underscore S sg at uh, slash master shell plugin, and this is uh, all the the blocks that written by Livret. Uh, very useful. Uh, that you know, it's very interesting to 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 read that those uh, blocks. 